uh, now Miles, first time I met him scared the hell out of me because, you know, I asked him why he had a green trumpet. And he goes, we well, can't use the word, but no, he just says, I don't care, he's a motherfucker. I didn't ask you why you got a black camera. <laughs> We're very honored to have, all the way from San Francisco, photographer, renaissance man, Jim Marshall. <laughs> Jim, welcome, thanks. Thank you. We're at the Morrison Hello. Hotel Gallery here in Soho. Uh, you've got a new show mounted for a brand new book you've just released called Trust. Trust. The photographs of Jim Marshall. Janis Joplin on the cover. Yep, and then Janis behind us. Behind us. Jim, you know, let's just get right into it because there's so many amazing images that you've captured over the years. This show is just probably one-eighteenth of what you've grabbed. <laughs> you know, I mean, well, a lot of these pictures in this show have never been published, never been seen. The, yeah. the one of Janice, this one was, right. uh, was taken uh, in San Jose, 1968. 1968, San Jose. Yeah. And she was really at the height of her power. She absolutely. Was, uh, absolutely. Uh, and the thing that I like to say about Janice is uh, she wasn't maybe the most beautiful girl in the world. God bless her, she wasn't afraid of the camera. <laughs> the five guys that photographed her a lot, Herbie Green, Baron Woolman, Barry Feinstein, Bob Seidemann, and myself. She was always, go ahead, baby, take the pictures. You yeah, know? She, she was, was charismatic and she Oh just, yeah, you know, absolutely. She let it all hang out, as did her music. I mean, when you yeah, really, you know. She let it all hang out, man. Yeah. Now, you know, I mean, were you a guy who was just at the right place at the right time? I think a lot of it could be that. Uh, and I was fairly well known and I got the access that, uh, well, the young, the young photographer now gets the access with Bad Daddy Klitsch. Right. Uh, and he's a good friend of mine. Right. Uh, I have Timothy White that I'm doing the next book with. Right, uh, sure. But was it, was it different, what I'm trying to establish? People were a lot more relaxed. You didn't have to go through a publicity oh, no, department. No, none of that crap. You no. just hung out with them and they yeah, said, yeah. Yeah, hung out with them and called them at home. Right. Yeah. Just, <laughs> so like, you know, I mean, all your iconographic images, the dead, Moby Grape, you know, you, you're, they were friends with you, you were yeah, friends with yeah, them. Yeah, well, same with uh, early on with the Stones, with Chris Dobson, with Johnny Cash. Right. Uh, you call John at home, John, I've got to do some pictures. You know, I was just, that's the way it was. And did you know growing up as a young man, photography was the thing and not, no, say, no, no. oil painting or... Well, no, no always, oh, oh, always cameras because I had one to track me as a kid. And the guy that took the picture for school had an early Leica and it was razor sharp. And I thought he had a magic box. So if you ever come to San Francisco or anybody that, I'm in the phone book, Jim Marshall, you know, call, you know. Right. Uh, I've got a scrapbook of pictures of cameras cut out of magazines with the prices paste, uh, pasted in the scrapbook, the prices written in pencil above the camera. That's I mean, great. it's about an inch and a half thick. That's fantastic. That's the dreams of a young kid, you know. All right, so this is, I know this shot, Folsom yeah. Prison, yeah. Johnny Cash. Now you've got a real famous one with Johnny flipping off. That was uh, the shot of Johnny uh, flipping off the, he, he says it was a TV crew and I had said at the same exact moment, let's do a shot for a warden. <laughs> and that was a sound check at San Quentin a year after Folsom. After Folsom. Okay. This was outside Folsom. So there's Folsom, Johnny, you can see uh, the American flag in the background. Now, uh, just talk about the composition. When you're looking at, when you're framing a shot, do you, uh, are you taking it all in at once, or are you just grabbing shots, banging them out? Well, I pretty much know what I want. Yeah. Uh, so you said, Johnny, let's shoot this outside, I want to get the wall. Oh, yeah, well, we, we, we were outside, we walked around, yeah, and then we went into the Greystone Chapel, shot some stuff in, because the convict, Glenn Shirley, right. had written a song, Greystone Chapel. And he ended up performing that yeah. on the record after he met him. And then he really championed his cause yeah. to help get him released, correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's all in that documentary that came out last year. Very, very Yeah, beautiful. this is Exile on Main Street at Sunset Sound. They recorded it in the south of France and in L.A. So they did sessions there. 
What was it like being around the Stones, the bad boys of rock, after you'd done the Beatles, who were so, like, you know, American? Well, uh, I probably did more Coke than they did. <laughs> Coca-Cola, right? <coughs> well, yeah. The 72 tour was fueled by cocaine. Really? Oh, yeah. Sleepless it nights. It was a lot of it. Sleepless days. It was a lot of it. A lot of hedonism, huh? It was a good tour. Was I shot. I had the cover. I had the cover of Life magazine on right. Nick. Right. What was it like working with the photo editors back in the day? Were they a lot more tolerant than they are today? Uh, no. Well, I got I got along really well with most photo editors. Right. Uh, Would you get them into shows and stuff where they normally wouldn't have the access? The, 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 it, was, it was always different. Right. It was, there was no set way of doing anything. They just kind of winged it all the time. Yeah, because today everything, again, is so compartmentalized. Yeah, you got to go through the PR guy, the management, like, all the by, by the time you get to the artist, they don't even know, you know, they don't even know yeah. what they're there for. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Now, as of late, who have you shot that's really got you excited music? Uh, ben Harper, John Mayer, uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be and doing people some... don't know that Billy Bob has a pretty cool band, pretty cool oh, yeah. roots rock band. And he's a good, good musician. Yeah. Plus, he's just a great guy. Yeah, he's, he must be a fun hang. Oh, he's, you guys he's... must share some stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How about Miles Davis, that famous ring Oh, show? Miles was, was, became a really good friend. Right. You know, uh, no, he was great. I drove his car and everything, you know. Uh, now, Miles... First time I met him scared the hell out of me because, you know, I asked him why he had a green trumpet. And he goes, we won't tell you the word, but no, he just says, I don't care. He's a motherfucker. I didn't ask you why you got a black camera. <laughs> so I do. You know what I, I feel is a, a disconnect for the youth of America is with jazz, and it's an art form indigenous to America. I mean, how do we reclaim? Is is that just a day that's that left us, and it's hip hop now for <coughs> young kids? They, you know. I'm not into hip hop. Yeah. This just doesn't do it for me. Right. No, but so jazz. Are there any new jazz boys and girls on the scene? Oh yeah, there's a piano player, Jackie Tarazone, is yeah. really good. Uh, uh, how about Charlie Hunter? Remember him? He was. Yeah, but I never photographed him. Right. No. Yeah, because he, he, uh, was, he was in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, for I know. A while. Yeah. I think he's in New York now. How about uh, young John Mayer? Uh, he's that got was, skills. Well, he, he, I think, is one of the 10 top time, all time guitar players. Right. Oh, yeah, I think he's that good. Uh, the right. picture behind us with the dead, where, where they're doing the huddle, the, the huddle shot. I uh, mean, there are a lot of pictures of the dead, but this is one that is all. That was done, I think. That was done for Teen Set Magazine also. What is it about uh, this era of music that still resonates with people? What do you think, why, why is that? I think there was an honesty to the music. Right. Uh, I think there's just, you know, just as many good songwriters now. But, but it's harder to get through the digital noise because there's so much out there. Yeah, this, uh, it's, uh, it's gotten so corporate, so big. Uh, there's, uh, not much personal contacts anymore. Mm. You know, uh, that's what I think anyway. But you know, what do I know? Well, I mean, it's it's a, it's a common complaint I hear. You know, it's it's like you said, the the access points are so so difficult to hurdle. Well, the, the same thing is with me uh, that I've been given the trust by these people, all of the people I've photographed. And I've never violated it. Right. I, I have it, been doing this 50 years. I've never had once, not once, a lawyer, an agent, a manager, an artist call and complain what picture I use or where I use it. Mm -hmm. That, that I'll, I'll, you know, I can live with that. Right. Jim Marshall, check out his book, Trust. It's out right now. And in the spring, a new book. With Timothy, Timothy White. White, our friend Timothy White. Called Matched Prince. And you'll see that interview next year. Okay. Jim. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>